Well, another turn of events. Um, trying not to get the company name of this truck, but you can go back to my other videos and probably figure it out. A buddy of mine owned this company, started working with him back in like April, May. Worked out pretty good. And then, sorry for the dogs. In about July, uh, I had my kids for all month of July and I told the owner, hey, I'm not working any overtime in July. He was fine with that until I didn't work any overtime in July. And then some issues started. Started getting kind of bickery, arguing back and forth. Well, come to find out, what he's really upset about is the field service side of his business doesn't have enough business to keep me busy. So for about three months, I'd have like one, maybe two full days out in the field a week, generally only about maybe eight hours total. I'd go out and do one job, come back three or four hours later, there'd be small jobs. Um, with my salary and this truck, the truck cost him about a little over $3,000 a month for uh, just the payment alone. I couldn't afford it, couldn't afford it, couldn't afford it. And so I saw the writing on the wall. The solution that I was told was um, I could work in the shop for literally 50% less pay. I was like, okay, well, the field service rate is 155 an hour, shop rate is 120 an hour, that's a 20% difference. So for this company to make it, basically I have to take a 50% pay while they only take a 20% cut. And I'm like, ah, I don't think so. Today, I have next week off and I need to make some money. It's like I'm old green truck. Now, the old green TSR truck, has set for probably five or six months. So the battery's dead. And uh, let me show you some redneckery I'm about to do. When I parked it, um, my wheel and tire on it, um, had a big bubble on it, so I put a spare on it and then got it back home. But I misplaced my lug nuts. And this is a hub-centered wheel. These are for a wheel that's centered by the lug nut. Problem is a lug nut bottoms out. So we'll just put some washers on it. And I'm only doing this to get it just around the corner to the front of my shop. So it's not that big of a deal. Good enough. And so all I'm gonna do is check the coolant level, check the oil, make sure there's transmission fluid still in it. And then we'll crank it up. And I bet you anything this thing will fire right up. Plenty of coolant. It's got some oil in it. A little low, but this V10s and these Ford modular motors, they all consume oil a little bit <clears throat> every month. There's no blow-by or anything. That's just the kind of nature of the design. And let's check the it. Yep, it's wet. Now, some of y'all remember the story about this service truck. I bought this service truck for about $3,500. It was an old BNSF railroad truck. And I was seriously only thinking that this truck would last maybe six months and then it would conk out because of the V10. I'll tell you, the only major thing I've ever had to do to this truck is rear brakes, tires on that side because I've got the compressor and I've got that and I usually have all my heavy stuff over there and the tires are always overloaded. Um, put a fuel pump in it and that's pretty much it. Pretty much everything else has just been maintenance. It's never left me strained. The transmission's been solid. It's been a damn good truck. Only issue with it is it gets terrible fuel mileage. It averages about seven and a half miles per gallon. Now my lead foot doesn't help that any, but believe it or not, this truck weighs about 12,000 pounds. Let's hop in it. See what happens. Corn tech. This freaking truck, man. I don't think I'll ever sell this truck. The only thing I might ever do, Justin might talk me into buying his truck from him um, eventually. Just so he has a uh, work truck and then I'll buy it back from him. But it'll always be in my family, I think. It just, man, unlike my Dodge, it just starts every freaking time. Never has an issue. I'm gonna unhook my jumper cables, pull the other company's service truck, that one, out. Uh, put it up front, pull this one up front, and start swapping tools from the white truck to my green truck. Brand new tire. I got a Nito something, I don't know, for blah, 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 blah. Not a bad looking tire. She's cheap, but this truck has had a parasitic draw ever since I've had it. You let it sit for about a week, battery's dead. And I let it sit for about six months, so now. Uh, 
way to go swap the battery out. It's got a three year warranty, so it's free replacement. Go to Walmart and get it replaced. And maybe eventually one of these years I will actually attempt to figure out the parasitic draw. Probably not. Mm, that's a good thing about getting batteries at Walmart. Three year warranty, you know, you get to replace them every year. I go through a lot of batteries. Hook up a lot of jump starters to them. I mean, uh, they just randomly go out because they're faulty. All right, got a brand new battery. Warranty from Walmart, so it didn't even cost me anything. Now, I gotta start the old VMAC. And I have not started this dude in quite a while. I know the battery's dead. Let's see if she starts. The V Mark, the V Mac is like the V10. It starts every time. But the V Mac is actually awesome. It's a fantastic compressor. So I'm gonna go around, air up all the tires. It looks like the guy at the discount didn't put enough air in it to begin with. And it worked the wise. <clears throat> if you look inside the door jam, it'll always tell you how much you're supposed to have. 80 in the rear, 55 up front. So one of the reasons that VMAX started right up, <clears throat> because every time I have a small engine, I always shut the fuel valve off and let the actual carburetor run out of fuel. Because if you keep this ethanol added, methanol, whatever, corn gas um, in the carburetor, it'll gum it up and cause all kinds of problems. But if you shut it off, let it run out every time, I think I'll start almost every single time. I say almost because it's a cardboard eater like Chucky calls them, and that's just what happens. And guys, don't call that phone number. That's not my phone number. You're not going to get a hold of me. You're just going to piss the guy off that actually has that cell phone number. I kind of feel bad for him because you guys contact him a lot, apparently. <laughs> Back in my 2000, and insurance guy corrected me today. I thought it was an 02. It's an 03 V10 four-wheel drive extended cab F450 cabin chassis truck with a NAFID bed. And it's only got three hundred and sixty on it. I do have a couple of issues. Um, I broke the door cables on this, and at the time, I stupidly thought that I had to buy brand new setups. A brand new setup for each side is $175, but they do make a repair kit for it. I didn't know that before I cut the freaking cables off of it. So now I have to have a setup for this side. I think this side. The other side's doing it. I can repair that side, but I need the cables for this side. So I need to go junkyard scrounging or just buy the bullet and buy, buy one. So right now, the little doors in the back don't actually open, and it makes it... A real freaking big pain. Other than that, I really don't have any problems with that truck. It's been a damn good truck. No leaks. It's got a, like a little bit of an oil leak and a little bit of transmission fluid leak, but it's very, very mundane. The oil leak's coming from the gasket at the oil cooler, and one day, left to puddle, I bought the gasket set for it, and then it just sealed up, and it never really leaked again, and it kind of just barely leaked. It consumes more oil, and it wastes more oil than anything, but again, that's by design, and, and it's got some odds and ends and stuff that it needs, but at its core it's a damn good truck well hope you guys like the video i'm gonna start trying to upload more um i accepted a job with another company and I'm supposed to start a week after next i was supposed to start on the third next monday or this coming monday and then a new boss called me and said oh by the way you're not starting until 11th and then he called me today and said oh well you didn't finish your new hire packet yesterday so now it's going to be the 12th 
or the, you're gonna start on the 10th, and now it's gonna be the 11th, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So in the meantime, I'm gonna do some customer work, and who knows, if I get a whole bunch of customer work lined up, then there's really no need for me to actually go out and work for anybody else. That'd be a nice trade. But I won't have the shop anymore. I gotta get out of the shop, and I still have a ton of crap in the shop. So if you guys are in the Granberry area and able-bodied and got some trucks and trailers, I could use your help pretty soon in the next week because uh, I gotta get all the crap out of the shop and put it in storage. Put it in a storage unit that I don't currently have. <laughs> uh, it's been one of them interesting uh, years, like I said. Um, we'll see how it goes. Hope you liked the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you got your own V10 War Horse stories, put them down in the comments below. And as always, get out and fix it.